we're live. All right, what's up, everybody? Nano, let's do it. High fives. Ah, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, there we go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's do it. Nano, this let's is great. It. I'll tell you why. First and foremost, welcome to the Ven Vamos podcast, brother. Um, this is great because we went to the same high school together. Uh, we took, we studied together. Uh, we were at a lot of social events together. And bro, now we're like entrepreneuring it. Not not together, but in the same. Still side by side. You side feel by me? Side. side by side, and okay. we're able to to help each other out with this, brother. Dora's Bakery, right here. Just just let's jump right into it, bro. That's what it. is it? How do we get here? Um, and I'm gonna ask you a couple things in between. Sound Perfect. cool with you? One hundred percent. All right, talk to us. First and foremost, thank you for bringing me on. Appreciate mm-hmm. that, brother. Uh, let's see, well, Doris, I mean, uh, Dora was my great-grandmother, so back in her hometown of uh, Montevideo, she had a little farm, and on that farm, she realized that certain foods were making her feel sick. Okay. Okay? So, um, she really finally realized that breads and pastas were the reason that she was feeling sick. So, back then, celiac disease wasn't really diagnosed as often as it is now. So, celiac disease is uh, a disease, an autoimmune disease, where people don't really digest gluten well. Gluten. Okay, okay, so let's bring it back. Montevideo is where? Montevideo is in Uruguay. Okay, yeah. so you're, you, how do you pronounce it? Ur- you're Uruguay? Ur- Uruguay. Oh, to, Uruguay. So I'm Cuban. Okay. You're? Uruguayan. Uruguayan. Yeah. All right. American. Sure. Uruguayan American. All right, uh, cool, cool, cool. And si- so you said celiac disease? Celiac, yeah. Okay, but that's not that common, is it? Uh, it's actually way more prevalent than you think. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm, again, like you're, you're taking me through this journey of what's gluten, what's not, because I don't really understand much about it. Okay. Well, uh, okay. I mean, gluten is basically a protein. Right. It's a protein that you find in a variety of different flours. Um, so you can find it in wheat, barley, rye. Uh, but that's, isn't that like everything? Basically. Yeah. You feel me? Like isn't that uh, like everything? Yeah. So that's uh, that. Uh, once we started this uh, this journey of opening up doors, we really started doing more research into gluten into celiac disease, into all these other different autoimmune disorders. But when you say we, who do you mean we? Uh, you? My family, myself. Yeah. Oh man, so you're yeah. telling me you, yeah, I assume your mom, pops, anybody else? Yeah, the- my, three, uh, my two little brothers, my little sister. Are you the oldest? I am the oldest. What? Yeah. All right, head honcho in that. Okay, okay. Yeah. So it's all of you guys, and you guys all decided to open up a bakery. Yep. Okay, what, 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 what gave you guys the idea? What was the, uh, the inspiration behind this? So Dora, really. Um, that was my dad's grandma. So. Since we kind of took some recipes from her, like uh, breads, um, really some other stuff that she was working on, we kind of took all of that, then added to it. Uh, so once we added to it, we really realized that, uh, sorry, let me backtrack a little bit. Go, go, go for it. We were Thank really you. just thinking um, that the gluten-free market really needed this. Because well, there's really like, nobody's doing anything gluten-free, let's just be 100 yeah. right now. I like. mean, uh, there's, there's restaurants that do have a gluten-free menu. Options. Options, exactly. But not the not predicated, like it's not like this whole thing is exactly. premised on not having gluten. We have no gluten in our facility, actually. Yeah. Okay. So that's really the main thing, because um, maybe you have a gluten-free menu, right? But once you have that gluten-free menu or that one gluten-free item, once you get that item, put it on the same cutting board or the same fryer that you did something else with gluten, it's not, glu- it's it, not gluten-free. You, uh, you Right, because the machinery, because if you keep going through the same, you know, you, you cook X amount of whatever, yeah. and then you mix it in because that's just how, where the kitchen's at, then you're going to contaminate it, Yeah, and that's so a, to speak. Exactly, so some people, they can't take it, but celiacs, um, people who are a little more gluten intolerant, they can't. So there's like a spectrum, right? So you 100%. have people who are, with the, how do you say it again, C- celiac? Celiac. Celiac. celiac? That's C-E-L-I-A-C. Okay, celiac disease, which is like at the very end of the spectrum, is it like... Yeah, so, uh, so with, when you have celiac disease, your body really can't process gluten. So once it gets into your system... So like it makes you hurt, like you just start cramping up. It depends, up, it like, depends, man, because I've, I've, again, since we started this... Yeah, go for it. Let me look it up. Since we started uh-huh. this, uh, we've had so many people come through our doors and tell us their story, how they... Uh, really go out to eat, how they attend parties, just a whole bunch of different things. Like their lifestyle has to, because you, you feel me, you, you have can't to process wrap, yeah, it. You have to wrap right, your lifestyle. So Google says it. celiac disease is an immune disease in which people can eat gluten because it will damage their small intestines. That doesn't sound fun. It's not a fun time. That's not fun. If you have celiac disease and eat food with gluten, your immune system responds by damaging the small intestines. So it's like, it goes in like auto-destruct, like I can't do this why do you eat gluten? Basically. And uh, depending on the person, like I was saying, uh, some people have different responses to gluten. So I've actually had people that literally look at me and say, yeah, my, the next day I wake up and my face sags. I'm like, what? Uh, and the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, what? Their face literally sags. They you, look tired. Um, 
whole bunch of different things really depends on the person it's a case by case basis right because that's that, that's that spectrum right so some yeah. people now where does milk play a factor in any of, or, or does it or is it completely unrelated uh, the, on I the mean, lactose side i don't i don't well, know i'm just, since we open again we we're learning a lot as we're going you know right. uh this is again our first family business uh -huh. and we just want to continually keep learning and improving making sure we're the best out there so uh after we opened up we realized that there's a big amount of uh, people that are gluten-free and lactose intolerant. Wow. Yeah, and if they're not gluten-free and lactose intolerant, they're lactose intolerant, you know? So that those guys are even left out of this uh, this good food market because once we started doing the research, you know? Good food market. I oh, like how you said that. 100%. Whoa, time. That's how ah, I'm thinking about love, it. That's love. for sure. All right. Talk you about some good talk? food. All right. Talk about some good food. Can we show some good food? Cause we'll do that. Can we, can we start time. the mudding process of the podcast? Yeah. Right. Right. Um, so what, what, what see, do we, are we what do we have and while I eat whatever you're gonna give me good food market good food market that's oh. what I like to call it because oh. listen to this so you see this right no I don't see it. all right I, I got see. you I got you Boom. all right so bring right, one out start, bring one out let's start with the classic that's not a classic that this is, is a, not a classic that is a special special thing all right, right break there. it down while I while I do all right, man. do it break it apart Ooh. so that's gonna be an alpha brownie uh, you're gonna alpha? have yeah alpha brownie Look at that thing. So that's two brownies. In the middle, you get dulce leche, and then we cover that with white chocolate. That's Bro, you want a piece? Yeah, 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 you want a piece. You want a piece. 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 piece of that. That's Oliver, you want a piece? I don't think Oliver can have a piece. Yo. He can He can try it. <laughs> Go for it's it. really good, man. I can't. I can't. Bro, <laughs> it's really good, man. Bro, I really can't. It's like an Bro, orgasm in my mouth. Bro, it's really good, man. Okay, okay, okay. It's worth it. It's worth it. Oh, thank you, sir. Thank wow, you, sir. Wow, wow, wow. Gotta get a little piece of that. Wow. Yeah. Smacking. Woo! No gluten. No gluten. Wow. No gluten. Mad dairy. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Mad dairy. Mad dairy, though. Mad dairy. No, but listen. Talk to me. Almond milk, soy milk, the wave. You ready for the wave? Yeah, okay. Good food. Yeah. Side so note for the good food market. Oat right. milk. Listen to me on that one. All right, let's do it. Oat milk. Okay. Good food market. Once we were trying all the foods that you can buy in like supermarkets, uh, like you know gluten-free labeling, gluten-free brownies, cookies, etc. Straight up, all tastes like dirt. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call. I'll call out anyone out there in the supermarket, Publix, Whole Foods, anywhere. It tastes like dirt. Again, I don't eat gluten-free. That was Dora. I'm not eating gluten-free. But if myself and my family are eating every single thing that we put into our display cases, right, right, we're not right. going to sell it, man. Okay. It's just that simple. Because, again, it either tasted dry, uh, left a chalky aftertaste, just a whole bunch of things that it's not good food. It's just, not good, just food. not good food. So the good food market, so th this gets into like this whole, like, I, I, we got to talk about like GMOs. We got to talk about how this food comes into play. So what, like, like I don't know, the, the whole, have you ever seen Food Inc.? If I saw it, man, I saw it years ago. Yeah, but you remember how, like, back in the day, but that's an old one. They have, like, a bunch of new ones, but but either way. But you're a bakery, so, like, people come in for the mornings. When, when do you say you see the most amount of people come in? I mean, again, we're still new. Right. Uh, we're still in our soft opening stages, actually, so mm -hmm. we haven't really had a set grand opening date. Right. Uh, once that happens, we'll have more dairy-free options, more vegan options, uh, really just kind of push and see what we do. Because, yeah. again, we're trying to really be a part of the community. We're not trying to just say hey, we're here and this is our menu. Yeah, really trying know. to, you know, ask around, but, but see if we can eat dairy off free options as well. It's a whole bunch of stuff, man. Since since you started, you started what maybe like three months ago, four months ago. We're at about three months right so, now. You know what I mean? Like you, but your Instagram's kind of popping, bro. Like your ratio is on ridiculous. Thank you, sir. Like, Thank you, sir. You got like rapper like following, no followers. Like you only follow like thirty three people. What's up? Yeah, I mean, we're for that follow back. Man, but um, that's for sure. Okay, so what do you? What's like your favorite thing about working at a bakery? Um, I mean, not really a bakery, but work door specifically. Uh -huh. My favorite thing is just working with my family. Now. Okay, that's door specifically. Sure. So if it's not a bakery, how would you identify it? Because that's how I've kind of in my head, kind of like I get you. Like that. identified it. You, I don't know. Like this is just how I've come to. Yeah. yeah so why would you? So you were actually there, basically at the one of the first days type stuff. Uh -huh. You know, you were there pretty early. Um, you weren't. You didn't even see the display case, right? No. No. See, like I'm telling you, we only had. Bakery items, uh, the alfa brownie, some other stuff. Right. But when you came the first time, there was actually no grill, no food. Uh, we were still developing pizzas. pizzas. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, we had God, pizzas, had burgers. burgers, chicken nuggets. These are all things that you can't really have if you can't eat gluten. 
because a burger you need bread you know no unless you're wrapping it in, yeah, yeah. unless you're wrapping it in lettuce unless you're eating it on your plate or some you weird need keto stuff okay yeah exactly so we actually make all our bread in house uh same with our chicken nuggets and croquetas we make everything oh, else and oh. you got the vegan ones and Ooh, this nah. exactly so this is like the first step let me show into, these guys over here so this so, is the first step into vegan gluten all right let's let's just, let's just stay on the vegan croqueta aspect and we can talk about the good food market uh as to uh uh and, and all that stuff because i have a couple thoughts on the good food market oh, trying man. to get in there okay i know you're trying to get in there okay, gentlemen right. we got a all right let's do it oh wrong wow. so tell me talk to me Bro, I love the crust. You want to guess what it is? Bro. <laughs> you want to take a guess? Very Miami. We try to make it as Miami of a vegan croquet as possible. Bro, no, but this is tough, man. It is going to be tough. No, tough, no, tough, like, because some croquetas are a little pasty. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Or they're a little too, little too dry. Yeah. This ain't dry at all, bro. This is that's, mad That's boring. love. That's that love. This is love right here. 100%. So, I mean, uh, to make it as Miami as we could, we had to figure out how we're going to coat it. Because we figured out some other stuff, the fill and things like that. But how are you going to get breadcrumbs if bread usually has egg, usually has uh, butter, usually has a whole we bunch of... and a bunch of gluten stuff, right? Oh, uh -huh. oh, forget about the gluten. I'm just going straight into uh, gluten-free vegan, you know? Right, uh, because this is also vegan. Exactly. Sorry, mm -hmm. I'm going into vegan. This was tough. So, initially, we thought about doing maybe some corn tortillas or something like that, right? Like, uh, just kind of crumble it up. Does it have corn? No. no. Mariquitas. Those Where? are crushed up mariquitas. I roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them, roll them. Get them into like a little dust. Cover them over right there. Fry it. That's what's up, dog. Yeah. Okay. 100%. Okay. No, but that's really good. Um, I have a lot of friends now that are vegan. Uh, this is kind of like the wave. Even though uh, now that we talk that gluten-free and all these vegan diets, all of this stuff is like still less than 1% of Americans actually like subscribe to these food styles. But it's going up, man. It's going up year over year. I'm not sure if you heard anything about Impossible or Beyond. Any of those oh, yeah, I've, I've had them. You've had them? I like them. We have the Beyond Burger indoors. Oh, yeah. all yeah. plant-based, all that stuff. All plant-based. So, uh, fun story on that. Beyond, uh, I think it was Beyond. So, don't... Uh, don't yeah, yeah, go for it, go for it. So, Beyond, when they actually, I think they released their IPO. Mm -hmm. Man, that thing went, went crazy because, again, uh, last I heard, they're thinking about doing Beyond Chicken. Like the whole, just the whole... The, the chicken. Like just instead of doing a Beyond Burger, Beyond Chicken. So, yeah, so they could do like chicken nuggets, chicken strips, chicken, chicken exactly, sandwiches. Exactly. Yo, have you had the Popeye's is. chicken sandwich yet? Not yet. No. You, you gonna make a chicken sandwich? Uh, yeah, actually. You should we run are that. Gonna make a chicken you sandwich. should run that. So they still again, we're uh, we're a small location. We're just trying to really. No, get but it you're nestled this, you know? though. Yeah, nice and, 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 and here's another thing. I wanted to kind of talk talk to and, and get our perspective of high school. Okay. Because when people think about who works these businesses, who participates in. You know, the, the, these jobs, they think about something that, that somebody's unreachable. And you and I, what, you're like 22, 23? Yeah, 22. Yeah, I'm 22 as well. And you, you know what I mean? Like, we were in high school maybe, what, like four years ago? Right? Crazy, right? That's what I'm saying. Like, we, I don't, I know you and I weren't thinking the same thing. Listen to this. Not uh, at all. No, so, I wasn't on that. So, on my way home today, as I'm getting ready to kind of come yeah. over here, I start thinking, I'm like, all right, cool. I'm going to go see my, my dog, Nadir. Yeah. We're going, we're going out there. And I start thinking, like, damn, what's the first time I met Nadir? Ninth grade Miss Scala's class. Yo, you don't even gotta bring up Miss Scala. I know, dog. dude. I know, I know. Yo, God bless your soul, man. A hundred percent. But I remember you were just you were there, and if you would have literally looked, at, if you would have sat, sat in the back, we sat in the back. Hundred yeah, yeah, yeah. percent. <laughs> now imagine if someone were to come up to us and say, "Hey, Nano. Hey, Nadir. In what for eight, about eight years." Uh, Nadir's gonna be doing Ben Vamos podcast, so, really just so working crazy. with the community, doing yeah. a whole bunch of things on his own, and you're gonna be running a bakery. I would have laughed in their face. I would have laughed in their face. I would have laughed like, in their face. Excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go to the NBA. What you talking about? <laughs> nah, but look, ninth grade year, I played basketball, and I swore I was gonna do something. Okay. Nah, I didn't do nothing. I mean, dude, you were blocking. Nah, but I the football, that. the football, yeah, nah, football. Nah, the head coach was like, "Yo, you should slide." But what I really wanted to talk to you about, man, is like more as if you felt that in your high school experience, it prepared you for what you're doing right now. Like, do you really like? Like, I'm just saying, and I will, and I'll take the the, the position that Gables was awesome. My Gables yeah. experience was phenomenal. I loved every second of it. And you played sports, right? Yeah. And do you think sports helped out in that? Like, and how and how you think today? Like, your high school experience did it help? I mean, again, just like you said, I love Gables. Gables really made me into the person I am today. Not Gables, uh, but actually, I think it's just kind of common among the school system. Okay. It doesn't really, uh, didn't really prepare me in the same way that I would have liked it to, per se. I mean, I would, 
anything I learned in high school almost had no impact, no, no impact on what I'm doing right now, in right. a sense, you know? I wasn't really learning about uh, how to file my taxes, how to uh, kind of find... Uh, a location. A location. Yeah, man, we were doing that for two years, you know. Okay, you have to find the right place. You have the right to location. find the right place. And I feel like for that type of stuff that you do, you're gonna have to have like if your if your place doesn't even have a parking, I bet you're screwed. Exactly. And you saw you see our parking situation. We went to places way worse than that. But I don't. You know? Can I be honest with you? I don't think it's worse because people are gonna be in and out of your stuff. Yeah, but again, but you want them to stay also for for especially if they're sitting down to have a I meal. Would, yeah, I would love for them to stay, have a meal with us. Um, oh, that's kind of kind of the main we thing. Build up yeah, to it. Yeah. Build up to it. Uh, we've had people come through. I mean, the other night, about a week ago. Oh, yeah, a week ago. About <laughs> <laughs> See, that came out when we were in high school, yeah, bro. That's true. That's true. <laughs> now listen to this. So about ten people, ten twelve people came in all at once around eight thirty at night, and yeah. I'm like, oh. Cool. You can make it the spot. Oh, I would love like to. Like Mary. I would love to. And oh. guess what? That's gonna be the, that's the future. That's uh, that's for another. Look, day. if you've ever gone to Mary's, you gotta go to Nano's. Well, really, Doris. That's what I'm saying. Oh, that's Doris. what I'm saying. Yeah. Doris. Doris. Mary's Doris. Yo, it, it honestly fits. Instead of going and getting a croqueta preparada, a pan con mate. What do you mean? Oh, that was hard. You gotta run that. Oh, I should take Mary's out. But let's say instead of getting that, you come over and get some chicken nuggets. You get some pizza, no gluten, burgers, no. no gluten, no gluten. All these good things. I mean, look, oh, let me bust let's, another one. Let's another, go. Get in there, get in there. This is dinner. All right, we're well, saving that cupcake for last. That's saving the, that cupcake for last. All right, yeah. so we're gonna. What are you do, picking out? Uh, okay, I'm gonna do Ooh, the chocolate classic. chip. Classic. classic. You want half? Nah, I'm good. I'm good. No, nah, okay. So I've, been eating, I've been eating all day, man. Oh, I okay. eat this all day. <laughs> okay, so so the reason why I talk about Gables is because I wanted to just kind of shoot you an idea that I have. So one of the uh, one of the experiences that I had in the Alfi campaign um, was that we actually went to go, you know, put up flyers and businesses. Mm -hmm. One of the businesses that I walked in with that intention of was not like a bakery, but like a full out restaurant right in front of Citrus Grove. So on God, the same situation that you have, you're a, you're a food place next to a school. Yeah. You're okay. next to a school. Gotcha. Okay. So what I told the lady was like, yo. Do you realize how much money, not missing out, but how much money exists in your backyard? Because every single day at 2.20, all of those kids are going to be hungry as hell. And where do they need to go? They need to pull up to doors. So I, so I just wanted to shoot you a couple of shots. Okay. okay. You tell me what you think. Talk let me just, let me bring it back. I got to unlock the little computer. So for example, bro, you do like a cantina style, meal prep style, uh, kind of like program where you say, hey man, look, you're going to pay me $35 a week. And every single day that you get out of school, you're going to have your Dora's meal of the day prepared, waiting for you here, hot and ready. Just come pick it up. And then you just, you feel me? You you mark it. At the, just, you, All right. you, you oh, see what I'm I saying? Like, I'm already I see like, it. I see it. and that's exactly what I, I told this it. lady. Because think about it. How many kids go to Coral Gables Senior High School on any given day, at any given time? What are we at, 3,800? 3,800. Okay, let's say if like 10% of those kids knew about the and then tasted the fire yep yep you see what i'm just saying bro and the thing is that it's walking distance because guess what when i played football every single day i would either hit a sir pizza across the street or i, remember, I would go to fun. chef tien who's that your neighbor fun. now yep imagine instead of you know what i mean was there doors you know? and instead of chef tien that guy by the way by the love, way love love that guy. guy yo he's that cool, guy is a really cool man wow. uh i saw him today said hi to him this hard talk to me what yeah, you like it? The sugar cookie out of the cookies Cause, is my favorite. Because look, bro, it's not even like dry, bro. It's like it, like, it dissolves in your mouth as you hit it, you know? So if you were to go to the supermarket. Right. All right, you're walking through your aisles, right? You're looking for big I'm visualizing. Foods. Visualize it, exactly. Take your time, take your time. Uh -huh. You got your little shopping cart, or are you a basket guy? What do you think? Are you a basket guy, a shop, shopping cart guy? Honestly, I like the basket because... I'm in there in and out, but I, I probably, look, you'll never catch me out of Publix with a shopping cart, I'll tell you that, because you're going to be buying too much. Okay. Why are you okay. going to spend all that money at Publix? Go somewhere else. Now listen, you got your little basket. Right. Walking down the aisles. You pass by the baked goods. You try to get, you try to get some baked goods, but guess what? They all have gluten. So and now, they're probably stale. Oh, that, I'm just saying about the normal baked goods that you're kind of, yeah. you know, finding in the, mm -hmm. in the Publix aisles. So you grab that baked good, read it, wow, it's not gluten free. Okay. So now you're going to find your gluten-free section of the supermarket if they even have it. They probably don't. They probably don't, don't because that's that. just your luck, man. That's right. just your luck. Mm -hmm. So now you're going to have to be looking for the entire store to find maybe one gluten-free product. 
Now cool, you finally got your gluten-free brownie, let's say. But it tastes like dirt. It tastes like <laughs> but it dirt. Tastes like it dirt. tastes like dirt. It tastes like so dirt. So why would you do that to yourself if you can really have a place, family run, homemade, we make everything in house. That's, that's another thing. We make like, everything like, in this house. This ain't even like you no know, corporate stuff. You're not pulling up on on no chain. Yeah, man. This is everything is just straight. How, well, do, you, how do you say your last name? Sosadillas. 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 Yep. Wait, I call you Nano, but your name's not Nano. It is not. My name is Alejandro. Yep. Alejandro. Alejandro Sosadillas the third. Bro, straight from your bro. You're really the minority here, man. Yeah, one hundred. <laughs> You're one really the minority. All right, so talk to me about the different like techniques of baking and stuff. Are you the actual person that 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 cooks the food, or do you do like what? What are the roles that you guys have? Like, does your mom do it's all the mix, cooking? Man, you know what I mean? Like, how do you guys manage? It's that. It's that. It's this. Yeah, like you how know? do you guys? Uh, a little bit of everything. We kind of just uh, all kind of pick our jobs. Uh, because you all know, out, you know what needs to happen. Like yeah, we're all like on the same wavelength. And if we're not, we have to kind of get to that same wavelength. You know? How's the collaboration with your parents? Because mm -hmm. obviously, like they like own you because you know yeah. your son and stuff. But yet you work with them. So does it get difficult? Does it uh? It does does it get tough? Like I work with my parents, and to say the least, it gets a little difficult sometimes. But yeah, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. think forget work for a second. Just imagine you were at home twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Right. So at one point, something's gonna get difficult, you know. Yeah. I mean, it's just uh, not working, living in that case in close and quarters. And you take it home too because you see them like exactly. every waking second. So. Exactly. So it, at work, I mean, we work together. Things happen, but at the end of the day, I mean, it's, it's your parents, you know. Yeah, it's your and family. You guys are all go oriented. And we all, yeah, we, we all know where we want to take this and really just be a part of the community here in Miami together. And that's the most important part is that we're together, you know. Uh, we just want to. We've already talked about this. We're not really in this to fight. Uh, because we've seen it, you know, we've seen it before with other family businesses. People fight. That's what I'm saying. People like, do that, that a whole bunch of stuff, so. and it happens, man. It happens. But when it happens, you know what you say? Hey, let's stop being silly. Let's uh, let's move forward, and let's just get it done. Agreed. That's the main thing, you know. And because you know, you have a different experience than most average Americans. Mm -hmm. Most people, uh, their spouses, their family, you know, their mom, dads, like the really, you know, the fa the family usually does something else. Like the dad will be yeah, like a lawyer, sure. or like mm -hmm. the mom will be. A nurse, or you know what I mean, different career paths. So, how do you think that that your relationship with them has changed because of work? Do you think it's gotten stronger? Do you think that it's uh, it's it's grown more distant, or like like you know what I mean? Like, how is that? That's actually uh, really interesting. Um, I mean, we've gotten in a sense, we don't really have like family dinners anymore. Uh, you know, because well, you still go waking every time. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we're we're kind of getting. To, we we don't really have a set time to sit down, really enjoy a meal together anymore. But as weird as that sounds, it's a little ironic, though. Exactly. It's a little no, ironic. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Running a restaurant, not being able to sit There's down. There's another family crazy. One hundred percent. America. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, yeah. It's actually brought us together closer because now through the work, through the work, because we spend so much time together that of course you're going to be talking more to each yeah, other. You're going to yeah. be kind of just shooting shit. It's just uh, it's just how it is, you know. Okay, so you already helped helped me out with the divide. So let's go back to that whole like Gables Canteen idea. Mm -hmm. So just think, just think. We get like, cause I already have like the vet vamos. You know how many people have worked that cu currently work the campaigns that are at Gables? Yep. We hit them with the A, bro. Look, just tell everybody, slide the doors. We are gonna give you free samples. That's it. Yep. Like just just pull up and uh, just pull up samples. We've actually just uh, started putting out maybe some cheese scones or a little piece of cake and things like that. And Man, people love Dude, those sounds. I'm just saying, like, people just, just sounds. think about how many people you can build a brand recognition with mm -hmm. at Gables for this year, so that by next year, and you got to target the parents too. It's like, yo, your kids hungry, feed them. Tell them they're going to leave them with, with an empty tummy. Bro, yeah, yeah, literally, yeah. bro. Just imagine okay. a play where instead of the mom leaving the kid in front of school, the mom leaves them in front of Dora's to pick up the breakfast that's included in the meal plan. Oh, and then they hit the walk to school. I'm just saying, like, and you got obviously have to build that. That's just so like so. You know, you remember the parking lot, right? Well, on the other side. No, the parking lot. Uh, the teachers one. No, no, not Gabe. Because Doris, Doris. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I yes. like that. Drive in, drive out. Literally, dude. Drive in, drive out. But you're okay. also on like Uber Eats. You're yeah. on the Uber Eats, Grubhub, Postmates. How was that experience? Uh, dude, I mean, uh, we just trying to get. Can our you give me another crow, Oh man, go, go for it. Oh Please. man, get in there. Okay, get in there. This is really good. So, uh, actually, let's uh, sidetrack. What do you think about? Miami's first and only vegan croqueta. Okay, Talk so me. I'll be completely honest with you. It is not dry at all. I like a moist croqueta. I yeah. can't like yeah. it, like if it's choking me as it's going down. I'm like, 
we got to we got to this out right away. Mm-hmm. What I like it, it has a little bit more crunch than other croquetas. So what I'm saying is that you can really feel the layer. So for example, exactly the texture, man. Yeah, it's it's a whole lot of everything going on. I'll tell you another thing. If for anybody who's watching, you've probably had an Isla Canaria croqueta. So I'll juxtapose that because I like that one a lot. I'll juxtapose it. The Isla Canaria Croqueta is like very like pasty, but very moist. This has, I think, the same moisture, but I like the crunch. It's different. Like I like the extra. Yeah, and uh, so that one's extra crunchy because of the plantain chips. But I'm not sure if you've had the, the other croqueta, right? The, yeah. our, our first croqueta. No, but I'm saying that the plantain chips is good though, bro. Oh, 100%, man. 100%. And it gives it that little That's sweetness, different. you know? Yeah, it is it's a little, little sweet. sweet, right? Yeah, yeah. exactly. So, um, I mean. But what's in the middle? So, you see how it kind of has that ham texture? It does. So that's actually, it ain't ham, though. It, it's not ham, man. I would never do that. <laughs> uh, for a vegan croqueta, it's just evil. That's evil. That's evil. So, what we did is we actually got a vegetable protein. Um, so, we rehydrate that vegetable protein and make that in just about the same process wow. that we do the regular croquetas. Mm-hmm. The well, traditional croquetas. Because those... Uh, None of our croquetas are regular. They're gluten free. Yeah, they're gluten free and vegan. And on top of that, they're just fire. Like I'm not even gonna, not even gonna. Bro, cast no, out no, 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 no. Actually, I, no. Is it cool if I leave it for somebody? Yeah. Oh, okay. You okay. know what I mean. Yeah, yeah, I got you. Let me just leave you. it for somebody. I got you. They'll be mad at me if I don't leave them. If you don't leave them, if, if I don't leave, leave them, them, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit, hit the one. Hit the sugar cookie. I will hit the sugar hit the cookie. Sugar cookie. Okay. Okay. Boom. Well, let me break it down. Okay. All right. So talk to me. The Gable stuff. But now after after you left. I mean, um, high school, because we graduated in 2015. What was your college experience like? Do you think college helped you out? I, I mean, right now I'm in uh, FIU Hospitality. So mm-hmm. that, 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 makes sense. that makes sense, right? It just kind of just kind of goes hand in hand. So I can't really speak for, uh, I'll speak for myself, of course. It helps me because I can kind of, this is where, you know how I told you before that as much as I love Gables, I love my entire experience and everything about it. It mm-hmm. just didn't give me any like uh, anything you practicality. Practic exactly practicality. So now I'm actually learning practical skills, uh, things like bookkeeping. I'm also learning inventory management. Let's see, just a lot of things for the uh, restaurant industry specifically that you can actually translate. Exactly, I can literally. That's it. I learned something that same day. I apply home, it. I apply it. Yep, exactly. I mean. From cutting waste, uh, waste is a huge problem in kitchen with across food. America. Food waste, man. Talk to me about waste, waste, man. So I used to work at Chipotle, mm-hmm. and we would throw a lot of waste, not in literally throwing away, but in over portioning. Exactly. Because yeah, here, and, and it's both. It's both. Yeah, because then you, if you make an error, they're like, I don't want that. Make my bowl again. I'll be like, okay, man. And that bowl, guess where it's going? In the trash. In the trash. In the trash. Not, not yeah. to an employee, not to uh, s- someone that wants that bowl. Trash, man. It's Dude, like, so true. Like, just, just especially like about, in the, in the higher end restaurants. Oh, oh. They just, that's they just throw everything yeah, away. Yeah, okay, oh, if this isn't a perfect triangle, it's a little skewed. Trash. 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 <laughs> Trash. <Yeah. laughs> Dirt. But do you think that's also a part of like our, our culture of like American cuisine? Like how we've been like, if I'm paying thirty dollars for a freaking steak, I want that. You know, I want that pop in that. Like, man, you know what I mean? Like, what you're saying. I know exactly like, what you're saying. But the thing is, it it really depends because I mean, there's uh, against the United States is so big that there are some places that are much better at handling food waste than others. You know. And but you think in Miami we do a bad job of it? Horrible job at it. What do you horrible think it is? The, it goes to the tourism. You just think that these restaurants are just everything you're saying mismanaged. Happy. Uh, tourists come and sometimes they're not really they're not really careful about our city I mean I'm not sure I'm not sure how many years ago it was but I think the Miami Beach police uh, actually came out with a statement saying hey if you're here uh, as a tourist how about just show a little decency you know just respect our area um, so not not to hate on tourists. Love those. No, guys. we love them. That we love them. Pull up the doors. But yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pull up the doors. But uh, not just tourism. I mean, just in general, uh, restaurants. They're throwing away food left and right. Okay, you so know? so what do you think you throw away the most of now? I mean, right now we're making such small quantities of everything since we're right. just opening. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're not really doing a full scale prep list where we're. So when it reaches a full scale, it's like it's worked. Like you do this in the morning, it's then you follow say, up. Like let me let me kind of look at these and think about it. Oop, let's see. So let's say a, a normal prep list would be you do a uh, hundred cho- uh, quadruple C's, right? You do a okay. hundred quadruple C's. Let's say you only sell six. What's gonna what happen? are you gonna do with the what are you gonna other? Do with the 94? So then, why'd you bake it? Exactly. Why'd you even do that? Why'd you even do it? A hundred percent. Wow. Because, right. Right. I mean, some restaurants like to work on. We would rather throw it away than uh, 
Thank you. But you're like at this point, like why are we gonna why are you gonna waste it when we already know what's gonna be expected? But that's the thing, we don't know. Uh, well, I'll, I'll speak for Dora specifically. Since we don't know, I would rather say, hey, we don't have that right now, than to be making these large batches and throwing things away. Because again, we make everything homemade, fresh, From scratch. Yep. And, and you probably put a little bit more labor into the actual process. 100%. So, that you, 100%. so if I'm going to make it, it's because it's going to go somewhere. Exactly. We're not going to make it to put it in the trash. To put it in the trash. We're making it so it can fill somebody's, fill somebody's tummy, tummy, man. All right, for sure. 100%. Okay, I like that. I like that because I can, I can see how, for example, but then that also goes with expectations, right? Because they think they're going to sell all the uh, all of it. But then if you, if you keep it, oh, my God, that would just be a waste. I mean, again, uh, the, the plus for us being a family business is if – we don't really throw anything out. We I'm take it home. It to <laughs> <laughs> we take it home. Neighbors eat. Yeah. Uh, really frenzy. It's. I mean, we got some boxes yeah, right yeah, here yeah. for the friends. Talk to yeah. talk to me about the social media stuff, bro. Because you're doing. I love the pictures. It's amazing quality. What's been like your strategy? What's been like how how you've been moving? I assume you do it. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, cool. your moms and dads don't. They don't be. No, nah, they they don't know. They tried for a little bit. They tried for a little bit. It was it was fun. It was a fun time. But nah. nah. Yeah. But uh, I mean, it's it's really just kind of see what's going on so i like to just kind of open up instagram see what's going on today what uh what hashtags work the best because i think of hashtags as a group so it's just grouping photos together okay i really like to explore miami hashtags uh celiac specific hashtags miami celiac see again y'all you, you, yeah, 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 you group them all together you group them all together you see which ones work the best and where you really want to put your stuff out there do you, do you think consume. that a certain type of photo or a certain type of picture does better for you? So, for example, like if you just post a picture of straight out food and it's like a very like, yo, this, this burger is awesome. Yeah. Or like you've done in the past where it's like I'm posting a picture of me and my friend that came to buy this and I just showed off one of the customers. What what do you think works best? Do you think they're both at the same or you know what I'm getting at? Like no, the diversity of content. Everything, everything's different. I mean, again, since I'm going to keep saying this over and over. Since we're so new, we're still kind of learning. Right. Uh, so that's the same with our social media strategy. We're still kind of figuring out what photos work the best, uh, what times to post them. These are all like nuances that... It is a whole bunch of nuance. Know, a bunch like, of little you can't nuances, even... man. You can't, you can't overlook them because if you start overlooking them, your content isn't going to go to the right people or to any people, you know? If you don't put it up. If you don't put... Oh, forget that. That's yeah, my so biggest what, thing. Yeah, put up stuff, just put man. something just up. Put something up. So, so, a, so what do you do? Do you just take like a whole bunch of pictures of stuff and then keep it on deadlock? Or or do you like day by day constantly create more stuff? What's Because yeah. I assume you don't just dedicate all your whole day just to posting stuff I either. Wish, I wish. Because you know I what I mean? Like, up, so how do you... But I got other stuff. Um, yeah, like, I mean, uh, like, uh, like an alarm that says, hey, post now. No, so it's... I, I, re I started doing a schedule in the beginning, just kind of like, hey, let me take some pictures right now. Uh, let me put them up later or see some set times. But then I realized that the pictures weren't really coming out genuine or authentic. Right. You know? uh, there wasn't, again, any love in the pictures. Uh, so whenever I kind of get a good item, let's kind of see the quadruple, the quadruple C the other day. Okay. I loved how they came out. So I took it outside, uh, went right onto Lejeune, put it on my hand. Snap the and picture. So it just know? comes on the spot. It comes depending on the day, and then you just capture the moment. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's for the Dora account. Then I'm also trying to kind of, uh, as you've seen on my account, uh, the Nano Gluten Free account. Right. Hey, whenever it's raining, I'm out there eating food. I mean, I'm food. out there yeah, eating food. Yeah. You've seen that one? Yeah. Uh -huh. So that one's been uh, received pretty well. And just trying to see what's uh, what's the deal. Yeah. Did, you, did you need to get like any like licenses or any like permits or anything to like be like to serve food or is there is it like a process that you a have to get approval process. you know what i mean like a lot of process how is that like for you i mean man it's tough it's tough um again also talking to other business owners you really realize how permits and how uh applications and all of these hinder things you hinder you man imagine so you're trying to do stuff you're trying yeah you're trying to start you're trying to get your thing out there or get your thing started some people they already signed a lease they're already paying rent but and you got them on a hold up because you ain't giving me my permit. A hundred percent. That's crazy. Yeah. Nah, what? Oh, 100. That happens all the time. Let's say oh, you're tough. aiming. Yeah, man. You're aiming to open what? Uh, September 1st. You're aiming to open September 1st. Cool. You start paying your landlord. Now, September 1st, landlord wants his money, man. Yeah, because that, that was your agreement with that was your like, agreement. That's it. Yeah. hundred percent. And he's entitled to that, you know? But now the city of, let's say the city of Miami says, hey, uh, actually, we're gonna do a separate inspection now. Uh, we or we lost your paperwork, or just a lot of things can happen. Now I got pushed back two weeks, oh. and now you need another permit because that Fair one got right. pushed back. And now it's just a, it's just a and it, and it keeps you in. All right, so we covered a lot of stuff, Nano. Yeah. Uh, we went through all of Dora's history. 
We learned about your grandma. We learned about uh, celiac disease. Did I say that again correctly? Yeah, celiac. All right, for, for sure, sure. For sure. I feel like the biggest problem is that we're talking about so much stuff and I'm trying to process all of it that I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to say something cool. wrong. But yeah, but it happens. It happens. You got to learn it up. We, uh, we, we, uh, we, we then went through the uh our, our uh, high school experience let's talk uh let's let's talk a little bit about sports and then let's wrap it up okay, okay so let's sports man like i know you played water polo i played football do you think that the sports helped you in uh and how you think and kind of like the discipline that you gained or anything like that you know what i mean in that 100 percent. 100 i'm sure you can say the same thing right yeah it's just being part of a team uh getting that opportunity to lead the team as well you know, as following and following, man, you have to follow your coaches. You have to you have to know when to when to help out when you need help because sometimes you need to call out for help. Just right. straight up, uh, it's not always doing everything yourself. You got to be able to say, "Hey, man, I'm drowning. I need help." You think literally? That's it. Well, yeah, 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 literally, <laughs> dude. But you, you need a lot of like core strength to nah, be man. able to. Dude, to, to hit the. You remember me in high school? I was bro, like that man. I was no, like that man. But bro, you but you rocked it though. You were like King Dad bod, dude. <laughs> dude. No. But do you think that that same like team dynamic you experience with your family at the bakery? Oh, not the bakery. Well, I, I gotta stop calling it that because it's yeah, more. No, than it's a bakery and bistro. A but bakery and bistro. That's really because uh, we have everything from baked goods to burgers, pizza, right, right, a whole right. bunch of stuff. But yeah, man, um, the team aspect of working with the team it helps out a lot, and you can really see because also my little brother, uh, both my little brothers played water polo. My little oh, sister played sure. water polo. Okay. So we're kind of we're already kind of used to working in a team. From being at home, from being in the pool, uh, again, I'm not playing water polo anymore, but it did set me up to do what I'm doing right now. Right, you know? right. I think the same thing about the high level football. Just, just how how the skills are so transferable. Yep. You know, and it keeps you uh, it keeps you grounded. What do you think is the best the best thing that you learn from football? Is it the actual team aspects? Well, is it the I'm game? not I'm not gonna front. And my my football experience at Gables was a very interesting one to say the least. Um, I think the thing that you learn in football is. To, to buy into an idea because to go through the stuff that athletes go through oh, I and like, and like really like when you boil it down to what you do, you go out there. You were blocking, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, but it's not, right. not even that, but it's like all this stuff like, yo, do I really want to run this lap? Yo, do I really want to like stay here and get screamed at by, by this guy? Yo, do I really want to take mm -hmm. ho homies is BS? Yo, like, do I want to do this? And, and the beautiful thing is that the answer is, yeah. Yeah. Hey, exactly. Yeah. And if the answer is no, then you better make it. Yeah. That's okay, for sure. So we got the little five minute mark, brother. In 2019, what is something that you want to accomplish with with Doris? Man, uh, that's a tough one, right there. As big, small, whatever. Like what I say. I just really want to be more of a staple in the Miami community. Okay. You know? Just really want to be working with schools, uh, working with the community at large. Just being able to do events, uh, kind of get our name out there, right. and really show thanks to the to the place that raised us, you know, oh, myself, my little brothers, uh, took my parents and, you know, they came straight from Uruguay to Miami. Right. They didn't go to Texas. They didn't go to California. They didn't right, go right. to New York. They're here. They're so here. this is where we started and we want to continue going from there. You right. Know? Okay. Okay. And for all the people that are watching, where can they reach you out on the socials? Where can they see the good stuff? On the socials? Uh, well, we got doors. We got doors gluten free right there. Let me see if I can put that up there. Huh? Boom. So and that's Dora. That's Dora, man. Yeah, that's yeah, Dora. Yeah. So we actually got a picture of her, made her into a logo. It was a it was a fun time. Let me see what's uh what's going on with this one if I can pull it up. Show the camera out right there. So it's Dora's Bakery and Bistro. Dora's gluten free username. But look at that ratio, Leo. Bring that here. Bring that here. Yo, the man has one thousand two hundred and thirty followers. Following 36 cats. What it? Look, he's like, I got to see that. Yo, the wizard. You got you to show me how to do that for the Ben Bombos face. Okay. We're not, we're not that dripped out. Okay. I mean, dude, you just, uh, again, just so like, the I don't the community. Nah, man, it's being part of the community. But you be commenting on other people's stuff. You be dropping that drop. So I did. I did initially. And then uh, I started hacking to our friend Javi. You know? Oh, bro. You know, the, yo, shout out to Javi. Shout, shout out to Javi. Javi is the progenitor of this. Honestly, if it wasn't for him, like a lot of these things would have happened. But he is the homie by all means. Man, that, that guy knows his stuff. Um, he literally hit me up one day and said, hey, Nano, you're spamming. And I go, what? And he goes, you're spamming. You're a robot. Like, just like that. <laughs> like, out of the blue. And I'm just like, all right, man. Uh, uh, what yeah, do you yeah. mean? What do you mean? And then he goes, dude, you, you can't be doing that. Like, uh, like it's... 
yeah, sure, you're gaining followers, but what are those followers going to really do? Engagement, dog. It's all you got about yeah. You got engaged. So I, it clicked. I was like, wow, I actually got to be a part of the South Florida gluten free community. I have to be part of the Miami community at large. And that's what I did. I you just gotta, started you talking. You got to go out there to the festivals and you got to like, pull up yeah. like on and just be like, yo, just eat this. And man, we haven't done any events yet. We haven't done any. We're gonna events. get you in them. Oh, we I hope so. Some. I hope so. We're trying. Hey, we're, we're itching for it. We're ho- itching for hopefully, it. and like, look, we got three minutes. And I want to leave it off on this. Hopefully, in like ten years, you, me, and Javi are all just like racing our Teslas, like just not worried about the <laughs> about the podcast, gas consumption. Podcast in the Tesla, each Tesla. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like we're just <laughs> cutting. Oh man, we yeah, that's the wave right there. But either okay. way, panel, thank you so much for coming on, bro. It was an absolute pleasure. Sure. And uh, everybody, make sure to follow Doors. Uh, just so, just to reiterate, where is it exactly? It's on Lejeune, and yeah, it's on Lejeune, and basically just one. Uh, so it's gonna be four seven zero two South Lejeune Road. And if you kind of want some landmarks, you got Havana Harry's, you got Gables, uh, Robin Stuckey. We're nestled in a small little mall. So if you drive by, you're gonna pass us. I'm telling you that right now. Yeah, it's like but right where you like as you're passing the shirt pizza. Like if you if, like if you're coming, shirt pizza man, that's gone. <laughs> that's gone. <laughs> that's been gone. What is it now? Nothing. It's been empty since shirt pizza. It's they been folded, empty. bro. How are you gonna not make money on a restaurant next to a high school? They folded. Nah, 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 nah. And that was the pizza. That was, that was, pizza. was I liked yeah. it. I heard that. Either way, not nah, nah, a bad. Nah, nah, thank you for having me. Thank you, man. Thank you. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs>